All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Smart Live class. Uh, happy Wednesday, if it's Wednesday, wherever you are. It's Wednesday here, Wednesday afternoon. Um, but, you know, whatever day it is or year it is or planet you're on or whatever, welcome. Um, I'm your teacher, once again, uh, Sean. And, uh, yeah, I'll be your teacher for the next hour. I see some familiar people in the, uh, in the chat, which is great. And, of course, we've got um, Lane, our moderator, in there in the, in the chat to take care of you if, if you have any uh, questions or anything while we're going through this. Um, fired it in the, in the chat, and we'll try to get to your questions, okay? Um, let's get started. I don't know if, if my voice sounds a little strange today, maybe a little deeper than usual. I'm just getting over a bit of a cold. So I've got some honey, I've got some lemon, I've got some hot water. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go if you guys are, okay? So let's get, let's get rolling. What are we doing today? Reading skills is where we're going to start, okay? So this lesson I put together because we've been noticing on, a, uh, on the Facebook page, uh, Learn English on Facebook, and I mean, in, in my class as a teacher and in other teachers' uh, classes, students are always asking the question, um, how can I improve my reading skills or, or my uh, reading comprehension? So I thought we would put a lesson together and give you guys some tips, uh, get you guys using some, some specific strategies that you can use to improve your, uh, your reading skills, okay? Um, we're going to start with the obvious kind of stuff and then we'll get into some more uh, skills specifically geared towards or focused on, I would say, academic reading, right, for school. Um, but what we talk about today, you can definitely apply to um, pleasure reading as well. And that kind of, that's where we're going to start because usually when we say the word reading, um, this here, this is the, the type of reaction that, that I get from the students. This is what students think of when they think of reading. And I, I want to take you from here today, hopefully, over time, take you from here to here. Oh, reading shouldn't be this. It should be this. Look at that. That's so nice. Look at her. She's, she's happy. She's in a field, lying on the grass. I mean, that not that, that's how everybody reads, I think. Right? So I want you guys to uh, improve your reading skills so that uh, you don't see reading as, as torture, right, or something terrible, but something that's enjoyable that you can do in class and, and out, right? So let's try to get you there in the grass okay, with, with a book. Let's start with, oh, and some people are saying uh, speed, speedy recovery. Thank you, Selma. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I had a cold a couple days ago. I'm getting over it. I just, I talk too much and now my voice is, is gone. But that just means maybe I'll talk less today and make you guys do more work. Yeah? So this is the question that students ask. How can I improve my reading uh, and my reading comprehension? All right, this is what we're going to start with. And of course, I'm going to start with the, the obvious answer. Okay, don't get angry at me. Don't run away yet. I'm going to start obvious and then I'm going to give you some strategies later, okay? So the obvious answer, the answer that I give my students every time they ask, how can I improve my reading skills? The answer is this. Read. 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 All right? Now it seems obvious, but it, it is, okay? So the only way you can improve your ability to read is by reading. If you don't read enough, then obviously it will always be a challenge to, to read something and understand it, okay? So Read, read, read is my advice for, for today, but hopefully I'll give you something a little bit more useful um, than that, okay? But it is important to understand that, yes, it's, it's not magic. There's no, there's no magical wizard that's going to appear riding a unicorn on a rainbow and, and give you special reading power. It's, it's all up to you to read as much as you can, as often as, as possible, um, just so you see how the language is used. In, in written form and you become used to it and it becomes a habit and it gets easier over time. Okay, so that is um, my first piece of advice. Okay, um, but we're going to go beyond that, obviously. Okay, so what can I say? How can you improve uh, at reading? The first thing I would say is also read what you like. Okay? Oftentimes students spend so much time kind of focused on the academic side of things. They're reading the, 
the IELTS book or the, you know, the textbook. That kind of stuff is important and you have to do it, but it's important also that you, you find something that you're interested in, right? Pick a, a subject that interests you or pick a, a format that interests you um, and, and read about it. Comics, reading comic books in English is still reading in English, okay? So it's still, it's good. Read comics, fashion magazines, sports news, movie reviews, whether it's online or in a magazine, any reading is good reading. Reading is reading. So um, pick something you like because if you spend too much time um, just reading IELTS kind of stuff, um, this will be your experience with reading. Yeah. So you pick something that interests you and again, hopefully, this will be your experience with reading. <laughs> yeah, back in the grass, there are so many pictures on the internet of uh, happy, attractive people reading books in the grass. So I, I, I thought I'd share some with you today, yeah? So I want you guys, again, to be happy on the grass or in the snow or wherever you are uh, lying down reading and enjoying it. So pick something you like, okay, is rule number one. Again, we'll get more specific to the strategies in a minute. Reading short things is okay. Short texts is okay, right? Uh, short articles, if you don't have a lot of time, um, you, don't, you don't have to, to aim too high. Be realistic about what you can handle and how much time you can put uh, towards your reading, okay? So you don't have to be reading uh, a Russian novel in order to improve your reading. You should eventually, someday. They're great. They're really nice. You should read them. But also reading a short article in, on, a, on a website or uh, in a newspaper or something like that is good too. All right? So set kind of realistic goals for yourself uh, and, and get a realistic habit happening, okay? So that's kind of where the, the general advice ends, and we're going to get a little bit more specific now, as long as I can speak, all right? <clears throat> the key when it comes to um, reading for pleasure or, or reading, especially reading for academic purposes, for school, you have to go beyond what we call passive reading. Okay, so passive reading, if you go beyond it, it means to be an active reader. Yeah, so what does it mean to be an active reader? What is passive reading and what is active reading? Because obviously reading itself, you are doing something. So it's, it, it sounds active, right? So sometimes students don't, don't really know what I'm talking about with that. But what is the difference between passive and active? Let me compare, because last week we were doing comparison contrast. So. Passive and active reading, the difference between them, is similar to the difference between watching a documentary on TV about fish in the ocean, which is fine, it's great. That's passive reading. And snorkeling in the ocean with fish, that's active reading. Okay? As we said, reading is reading is good, but in order to really improve your skills, you have to go beyond this, passive reading. Passive reading basically means you have a book and you're, you're getting the information, but it, it requires very little effort on your part. So there's not a lot of thought going on while you're reading it. And oftentimes students do this for um, assignments. The teacher says, read this article, and they sit down and they start to read it. And I know this has happened to me, and I'm sure it has happened to you at least once, where you sit down and you read something uh, for five minutes, ten minutes, you read two chapters, five chapters, however long you've read, and when you're done, you realize that you can't remember anything that you just read, right? So you were reading the words, but you weren't really concentrating, you weren't really focusing on the words, and that is passive, and we want to get beyond that. Active reading, as I'm trying to show you here, is about getting in the water, it's about swimming, it's about touching it and feeling it, and it's about interacting with the words in the text. Whether it's a book, or an article, or an essay, or report, reading should be an interaction between you and the person who wrote it, whether they're there or not, right? So this is, this is what I want to focus on. How can you be an active reader? I'm going to give you a couple tips today. With reading, there's so much to talk about that we can't possibly cover everything, but uh, I'm going to try to give you a, a few uh, tips to be active readers, okay? So, active reading starts with what we call preview, okay? Previewing 
or uh, surveying, some people might call it, right? And I saw some people using words like skimming and scanning and that kind of stuff. This is all related to, to active reading. The preview means literally before, to look before, okay? So before you read the article, it's important to look through it quickly, right? Look at the title, quickly read the introduction. If there's a short little introduction at the beginning of an article or essay, read that quickly. Skim through the whole text, okay? And look for things like section headings. So if it's, if it's divided into headings, or into sections rather, each section may have a little subheading of its, of its own, a little title. Look at each title, okay? Section headings, obviously look for pictures, charts, graphs, and lastly, anything that's written in bold, right? Sometimes an author will put important or keywords in bold in, in a chapter or in an article to draw attention to them. Going through this stuff first will give you um, the advantage when it comes to actually reading through it. So this is kind of pre-reading, if you want to call it that, is previewing, okay? So just to, just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to put something on the screen, okay? I have taken, today I, I went online and I, I found an article on a topic that I thought was interesting. And I, I put the article up here and I'm going to show it to you on the screen, except I took all of the text out. The only thing that I've left, I've left the title, I've left the section headings, and I've left any kind of pictures that were in the article, okay? So I want you guys to take a minute, 60 seconds or maybe even two minutes maximum. I'm going to put on my happy music. I'm going to pop off the screen, and I want you to look at this information. Look at the title, look at the headings, look at the picture, and I want you to decide what do you think this article is about? What do you know about the way it's organized? What does this information tell you about this article before you read it? And whatever you see, whatever you notice, pop it into the chat, and then we'll talk about it together, okay? So this is the article. You got the, you got the title up here, you've got your section headings down here, and you've got a single image on the side. Again, I've taken out all of the words from this article. This is all you have, okay? So this is basically like previewing the article, all right? I'm gonna pop off, look here quickly, and decide what, what is this article about? What do you know going into this article, all right? Happy music is coming on, and I, I'm out of here.
All right. Yeah, we got some good stuff coming in. Some people putting some, some answers in there. Eduardo, nice one. How to, how to fly without wings. <laughs> yeah. Sounds inspirational. I don't, I, don't know how, I don't know how inspirational this one is. But um, OK, so you look at this. You're, you're previewing through the text. Obviously, all the text is gone. You've got the title, the headings, and one graph on the side. And you have to, you have to think before you read it, what is this article about? So uh, I saw somebody said drugs. Um, I think it's Aaron, is that how? I don't, I'm not sure if, you, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but I think I saw that you call yourself Aaron. I said drugs. Um, Selma saying the frequency of dopage among students or article about students who dope to study. Yeah, I wouldn't use yeah, dope to study. I don't know if I'd use the word dope in this case. Dope as a verb, it sounds more like um, steroids, like for athletes. Although I guess you could argue that this is the, uh, the same thing, OK? So um, an adverse side effects is coming in. OK, so you're looking at it. You see the title. Obviously, you know um, that it's about something called study drugs, right? So you know it's about drugs, which you guys are correct about. And you know it's about um, final exams. We've got finals here. Now looking, also important to note, to mention, that down here you've got four section headings, right? Now what that tells you immediately is that you have four sections in the text, which again seems obvious, but it's important to see how an article is broken down before you read it, because you know that each section is going to focus on one specific thing. In this case, you've got adverse side effects or stopping the trend, okay? And then you've got your your image over here, which if you look closely at it, is looking at the different level of student. You've got freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and then cumulative means everybody, looking at the different numbers and percentages of students in what year of university they're using these drugs. Okay? So yeah, I'm seeing good stuff come in. Students using drugs to learn faster and to, um, to focus and that kind of stuff. And this is good. This is a good start. So that is, that's the preview. That's before you read. Okay, good. So now it's time to read the article. Or is it? Well, no, not yet. Okay? It's not time to read yet because before you read, it's time to question. Okay? When I say question, what I'm talking about is after you preview, after you look at all of these headings and all this information, but before you really start to read, it's a good idea to create questions. Okay? You're creating questions that you can answer while you read, all right? And it's also good to, to use the information from your preview, from the title, from the section headings and whatnot, use those to help you create these questions, to help you write the questions down. Now, the question the students always ask is why? Why would I write these questions down? What's the point of making questions? Good question itself, <laughs> and the answer is, because creating questions gives you a purpose, okay? It sets a goal for the reading, and that will eliminate or, or reduce the chance that you are going to read something and start daydreaming, because you're going to be more focused on answering the questions. It gets you engaged with the article or with the, with the, uh, with the chapter, right? So writing down these questions um, gives you purpose. And hey, we all, want, we all want purpose, right? So this is, this is good. And this is exactly what we're going to do now. So go back. We're back here, OK? I see people are talking about the, <laughs> yeah, the length of the article. Now, obviously, uh, for the live class, I can't get you guys to read the article now. So we're not going to do that exactly. We're just looking at kind of the, the intro to the article, OK? So again, this is just the title, the headings, and the information on the side of the graph. Your job is to write down some questions that you think of while you're looking at this stuff that you will probably be able to answer by reading the text. So what questions do you have about this information or about this article that you want, to, that you want the article to answer? Okay. So for example, my first question, and hopefully it would be your question too, unless maybe you already know, but my question is simply, what is a study drug? Okay. If I see the article and it says, examining the use of study drugs during finals, my question is, what's a study drug? And hopefully the article will explain that, okay? 
So this is what I'd like you guys to do. Again, I'm going to pop out for two minutes. Again, this is active reading. Look at this information, and based on what you see, write down some questions that you would hope the article will answer for you. Okay? Number one, as I said, what are study drugs? But you can write down any question about this article that, that comes to you. Put it in the chat, and then we'll talk about it. Okay? I'm going to pop out again, put the happy music back on, think of some questions for this article, and put them in, in the chat for us. Okay? All right, some good stuff going on in the chat. I'm seeing lots of good questions, except for Zach. All right, so <laughs> yeah. um, Selma says, why do students use drugs? Yeah, good, right, good question. Oscar says, how does, how does a study drug work, right? How are the study drugs supposed to work? Good question. Selma again, why are these drugs popular among students? Good question. Um, Aaron says, my, my question is, what does the drug benefit? So what are the benefits of the drug? I, okay, yeah, I'm not sure if the article is about the benefits. <laughs> maybe, maybe the article will be, uh, be about that. Yeah, maybe you and Zach could, could talk to each other about that. Um, what else do we have here? We've got Eduardo, welcome back, good to see you. So what do the last students use more drugs than noobs once for? Oh, I see. So you're saying that um, down here, the students here use more drugs. Well, they actually, just be careful of that, because this is actually all of the students together. I, I don't know if you can quite see it, but that's, that word is cumulative. It means all of the students. Now, if you look really closely, actually, seniors, which means the last year, um, use the drug. Um, oh, yeah, no, you're right. They were offered less but they use, the, they, they use the drug more, 16% over 13%. Yeah, there are my math skills again. All right, good stuff. Marianne shows her face in the chat. Good to see you. The dangerous effects of study drugs, good. Why do universities need to inform students of the danger? What are the side effects? These are excellent questions. Can you get superpowers with drugs? Not an excellent question, but Thank you, Eduardo. Yeah? So this is, this is the beginning. Now, once you have the questions, in theory, if you were at home by yourself, well, you are at home by yourself, but 
if you're not in the stream, you've got this article and you're going to sit down and read it. Now, I'm not going to make you read it yet. Maybe that'll be your homework for the, for the week, okay? Because, yeah, I don't want to just sit here for 20 minutes while you guys read an article. So, in theory, after you preview, after you, after you question, it's time to read, all right? But it's important to keep a, a couple things in mind when you read. When you read, you want to answer your questions while you read. And if you have more questions as you read, you want to write them, write them down and, and answer those questions, right? So reading is all about answering your own, your own questions and, and um, as I said before, interacting, engaging with the text, okay? Now, the thing you want to be careful of and the thing that kind of traps a lot of students is new vocabulary. Now, obviously, as English students, you're going to encounter a lot of uh, words that may be new that you're not familiar with. And the one thing I would urge students not to do, it's important not to stop at every new word you see and look it up in the dictionary. Okay, you don't want to do that. What we're going to be talking about now is using context. Okay, because I don't, this is a scary situation. I don't want you to be in this situation here. Okay, I want to show you how to use context, yeah, poor mouse, um, he'll be okay, don't worry, um, he'll get out, and so will you. All right, so as I said, don't look every new word up in the dictionary as you read, because that will slow you down, and you'll miss out on the context of the sentences, the context of the paragraph, okay? The first time you read through it, you want to get the general meaning by using the context, okay? Context meaning the information before and after a word. So look at how the word is used in the sentence. Look at the words before it. Look at the words after it. And it will help you to understand the meaning. Just to, um, again, show you as an example, even this sentence on the screen, use context and the rest of it. What if a student doesn't understand the word context in a sentence, right? You've got this word, context. Some of you may, this may be a new word. Now it's important to, again, look at the sentence, look at what comes after it, and you'll notice this guy here, this little um, reduced adjective clause, sometimes called an appositive, the information before and after a word. This little bit of the sentence explains the meaning of context, okay? So pay close attention, not just to the word itself. Don't stop at the word, you have to keep reading because you may see the, the definition or the meaning afterwards. Also, in this same sentence, you see the word grasp. Again, it might be a new word for you, right? If you see the word grasp, you might not know what that means in itself, or you might know that, that grasp actually means to, to grab onto something, to hold it tightly. But in this context, what does it mean? Well, based on what we're talking about and based on the sentence, you can see that grasp means understand, right? So use the context to help you understand the meaning of the word, especially the first time through. If you read something the second time, then you can go back and, and use the dictionary. But don't get stuck. Don't get trapped like that little mouse um, with uh, so many new, new words around you, okay? So, oh yeah, and the other thing is, Keep reading. Don't stop just at the sentence, too, because maybe even the next sentence itself, or maybe two sentences later, will help you understand a new word. Remember that if you see a word that you don't understand, it's possible that the, that the author, the person who wrote the article, may um, know that you might not know the, the meaning of the word and, and will help you in, in the next sentence to understand it with, with certain things. Okay, And those certain things we call context clues, right? Little hints in the sentence that will help you understand um, a word. So context clues um, include examples, right? So look for words like such as, or for instance, or other, or especially, okay? That will help you understand a word. Definitions and synonyms. Um, as we just said with uh, context, you want to look between the commas in a sentence. Oftentimes we'll put a definition in the middle of some punctuation in that uh, sentence to help you out, okay? 
and contrast. Sometimes we use what we were talking about last week with comparison and contrast. We often use uh, a contrast to help explain something, right? We say something and then we say what it isn't in order to, to help you understand what it is. All right? So, with that in mind, I'm going to make you guys do some practice. So, if the friendly moderator could please be so kind as to share the link to the exercise in the chat. You guys, Lane's going to put a, a link in the chat, and I'd like you guys to open it up, okay? Oh, we'll get to the mistake of the week later. Don't worry about that. For now, I'm going to open up my copy, and it should look the same as yours. Okay, here we go. And I'll even make it a little bit, a little bit bigger here, perhaps, so that it can fit on the screen. All right, so everybody open that up, make a copy, or um, if you can't for some reason open it up, you can just look on the screen here. This is, this is, this is going to be fun for me, all right? Um, this, is what I've done. this is what I've done. I have taken uh, about six or seven sentences that I've written or taken from somewhere else, and in each sentence I have put a word that does not exist. Okay, I had some fun this afternoon, and I just, uh, I just made up, I just made up some stuff. Okay, just made up words that do not exist. So do not look for these words in the dictionary. Uh, it's impossible because they're not real. Okay, so if you look at the first sentence, it says, because of the drugs, possibly, pitophorous effects, many teachers, doctors, and parents want strict rules in place to protect students from the temptation. Okay, now the word patophorus is nonsense. It doesn't exist, all right? It, it sounds real, though. I think I should, I should start making up more um, nonsense words. Sh Shakespeare made up words. Why can't I, I guess, right? So this word is not real. What you have to do is read the sentence, and based on the sentence itself, you have to decide what you think this word would mean. You can give me a synonym, if you want, or a short definition. So for example, in this first one, because of the drugs, possibly pitophorous effects. Um, what, could be, what could be a word that would fit in there? I would say something like, um, well, how about adverse? Okay. Now we know adverse, or we can even take that back and say damaging. Right? We know it's damaging or, or something negative. Because of this part here, right? the teachers, the doctors, the parents, they want rules in place to protect the students. Obviously. If they need protection, um, that thing, that patophorous effect, is a bad effect. <laughs> okay? Don't worry if you can't pronounce these words because you're never going to see them again. Um, I made them up. <laughs> okay? So A is done for you. Patophorous um, is damaging. What I would like you guys to do now is look at the next six sentences. I'm going to pop out. I'm going to put the music on. And I would just like you guys to tell me what these words mean based on the context of the sentence, all right? Happy music is coming on. If you have questions, if you're, if you're scared or feeling lost or alone, just put it in the chat and we'll, when, and we'll help you out, okay? I am going to pop off here. See you later.
<laughs> All right. Good stuff. Lots, lots of answers coming in. <laughs> this is lots of fun for me. Um, I don't know if there's a job for uh, Oxford or something, just ma making up random words for the dictionary, but um, this, is, this is fun. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger on the screen. You've got lots of good answers coming in so that we can look specifically at each, at each one. Okay, so Sean's tips. This is true. Sean's tips about context clues are so helpful that the students were able to schmeege the meaning of the word beyond a doubt. All right. So I saw, yeah, lots of, lots of good stuff coming in. Mohammed said grasp. Selma said understand. Um, some other people said grab or grasp or understand. That's exactly right. Um, the word that I would put in there if you want a new word that you might not know, the word I was thinking of is um, ascertain. Okay, so ascertain is a real word. Schmiege is not. <laughs> okay, so now if you see the word like ascertain, if you don't know it, based on the context, you can figure it out. Okay, good stuff. What about C? Let's move this up here a bit. While it was lalamood by critics and audiences when it first was released, the movie was later praised for its use of experimental techniques. So I think I saw um, for C, I think I saw Marianne said criticized. Yeah, and I think a, a couple other people said criticized as well. And that's exactly what it, what it means, okay? So if you look at this nonsense word, you know that it would be criticized because of the contrast. Because it says here, it was later praised. You know that lalamood must mean uh, something critical, criticized. Or, again, if I, might, if I can give you a new word, possibly, slammed. Okay, so while it was slammed by both critics and audiences, it was praised later, right? So in this case, slammed is a bit slangy, right? It's, it's, it's uh, figurative, but it means to, to criticize something harshly, to say very um, critical things about it, okay? Good. You guys are nailing it. All right, what about the, the next one, D? At the end of the lesson, we will answer some of your questions as long as they are qualable to today's topic, <laughs> right? Sounds like an adjective, must be an adjective. And I, I noticed that, I think Selma got it. I think, you, I think Selma, you put the letter C to it, but I think you meant D. And um, Eduardo got it as well. Um, and Muhammad got it too. A whole bunch of people got it. Um, I see the word related, right? If, as long as they are related to today's topic, as long as they are, si I see somebody said similar, that's, that's good, too, and similar to today's topic. Or um, how about this actual word, um, pertinent, right? As long as they are pertinent to today's topic. So again, if you see that real word, not like, what was it before, qualable, but pertinent means to be related to, and you can tell that by the context. All right, now my personal favorite word that I made up today is E. The idea to change the group's name was not falafelly accepted. Nearly, nearly half of the people in the group voted against it. Okay, so falafelly, obviously, is an adverb because it's modifying accepted. And again, lots of good stuff coming in. Selma says fully. Muhammad says totally. Eduardo says completely. Um, what else do we have here? Um, Marianne actually got the word that I was that I was thinking of, um, which is unanimously. Right. Oops. There. It was not unanimously accepted. Now, what does unanimous mean? It means that not everyone accepted it, right? Unanimous means something is, is completely accepted, as you guys said. Totally, completely awesome. Really good stuff. All right, what about F? Now, F is tricky. I wasn't necessarily thinking that you would come up with the, the actual name of the science, but a lot of you obviously notice that it, it is some kind of study or some kind of science, right? Because it's called boomology. Eduardo Seanology would work as well. I see archaeology and stuff like that. Now, the fact that you know that it's a field of study is great. It means that you're using the context. Now, the tricky thing about this one is it really doesn't even matter what the name of it is here because you know exactly what it is. It is a field of study, and it says it right there. 
and it's a field of study that concerns this, the short-term rhythms of time and their effects on plants and animals. So, as I said before, if you look later in the sentence, this is actually a, a, a clear definition of the word that we're looking at at, at the top. Now, don't worry if you, if you don't know what this is, but this type of science is actually called um, chronobiology. Chronobiology is the field of study that concerns itself with time and how time affects um, plants and animals. So that's a new word for you maybe, okay? And the last one uh, on our context clue is ping ting chen. Ping ting chen, I guess, is, what <laughs> is the word. After being bombarded with emails from angry citizens, the politician wrote a, and printed a ping ting chen, a statement saying that he had said, what he had said was not true. Now the tricky thing about this one too is, let me show you this, what I can do here, I can just take this out entirely. Look, printed a statement saying what he had said was not true. So we know because of this comma here that whatever this word is, this section here is actually defining this word, pingtingshin, right? A statement saying that what he said was not true. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it is called, actually called a retraction. Okay, so they printed a, retra a retraction, which is a statement saying that uh, what he said was false or not true. Okay, um, good stuff. So this is what we're talking about when we, when we talk about context clues. Look at the sentence and uh, use the words before and after to really um, understand a new word. Don't get, don't get stuck like that mouse, all right? Good stuff. So, there's so much to cover when it comes to um, improving reading skills that I thought I would spend some time on that today, but we can't, we can't cover everything, okay? So I thought I would give you a few tips, uh, like preview, write down questions, and use context clues in your reading, okay? And maybe what we can do is, is start having this as a, as a regular feature in the stream where I can give you, um, once a week, I'll give you little reading tips, okay, to help you with your um, pleasure reading as well as your, your reading for, for school, okay? So, speaking of that, one thing, we're not, we're not done, but I am gonna mention what I put, oh, maybe it's actually on, maybe it's not on my copy, maybe it's just on your copy, the student copy. Let me take a look here. One thing, we're gonna get to the mistake of the day in a minute here, but I did include the link to the article that we were talking about before, okay? So we've already previewed it, we've written down questions, and now, uh, for practice, it would be good for you guys to, um, after the stream, later in the week, whenever you have time, to actually follow that link and read the article and see if the article answers some of the questions that you guys wrote down, okay? I'm seeing some good stuff. Mohammed, why does five out of seven gets a sad face? I think sad. I think five out of seven gets should have a should have a happy face or a one of those unicorn emojis or or, or something. One of those cute kitten faces or something. Five. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Selma's got it right. She's got the happy face and she got less than five. Even better. Okay. So forget about reading for now. Let's talk about the mistake of the week. All right. Let me get in here. Oh. All right, so back to the presentation. Let me go all the way down here. It is time once again for the mistake of the week. All right, what is the mistake of the week this week? Well, let's see if you can find it, okay? It's something that we have looked at in previous lessons and I want to, to kind of review to see what you've, what you've um, learned, all right? So mistake of the week, here it is. Take a look at this sentence and see if you can spot the mistake. All right. Again, I'm going to pop off the screen for a second, put the happy music on, and whoever sees the mistake first, of course, for today, um, March 16th, 2016, you are the best student on the internet, of course, unless it's already March 17th where you are, in which case you can be the best student on the internet for the entire, for the entire day. So good for you. Whoever gets it first, is the best and the strongest, all right? Um, fight amongst yourselves. It's a race. 
what's the mistake? Spot that mistake, and then we'll talk about it together, okay? Go for it. All right, you guys are super fast. You're quick on the draw. Marianne is tough to beat. Once again, maybe two weeks in a row, I think she is the, the first to spot the mistake. Now, a couple people did see it as well. Um, I see Oscar, I think you said the mistake is um, her should be his, but no, it should be her because um, Sarah is female. So it's Sarah is a woman, so Sarah's father and her mother. I noticed, interesting, that some of you uh, noticed the RE order in the word theater, um, which is not technically a mistake. Actually, that is um, an alternative spelling. This is British spelling and therefore is Canadian spelling because we are part of the British Commonwealth. Um, this is British English, RE, and in the United States, American English would be ER, but um, both are fine. Yeah, both are. Um, recognized okay so that's not a mistake the mistake is yeah and some other ones are coming in here good stuff the mistake is the comma there and I think that um, Luciana you got it too notice that that this comma is here now this is a very common comma mistake that students make uh, in their writing and that it has a special name it's such a common mistake that it has its own name of mistake okay it's called a comma splice now, splice means to split, okay? So split with a comma. A comma splice happens when you use a comma to separate two independent clauses with no kind of conjunction or anything like that, okay? So you've got a subject and a verb here. You've got a subject and a verb here. Both of these are independent, so you can't use that comma only to separate these two clauses. It's, it's a mistake, and it's a common mistake. It's a mistake that even native speakers of English uh, make, this mistake, okay? So let's look at ways to fix it. And I see lots of um, examples coming in of ways to fix it. I think I'm gonna give you something like five or six different ways that you can fix this mistake to avoid it, okay? And it's kind of a review of basically everything that we've talked about over the last few weeks, okay? so. Let's fix this comma splice. Again, you can never have two independent clauses connected together with just a comma. So, let's fix it. Option one. Sarah's father is a renowned artist. The comma's the mistake. Make it a period. Capitalize the H. Now you've got two sentences, okay? Sarah's father is a renowned artist. Full stop. Some of you like to call it full stop. Next sentence, her mother is a successful theater actress. No more mistake, everything is wonderful in the world, okay? So rather than put a comma there, start a new sentence, and now you've got two simple sentences, all right? Next, option two. Here's this mistake again. Sarah's father is, renowned, is a renowned artist. 
okay? The comma mistake here again. And I think Marianne even mentioned it in the, in the chat. Take that comma, turn it into a semicolon, as we've discussed in previous lessons, and now you've got two independent clauses connected with the proper punctuation. It's a good compound sentence, and again, everybody's happy, nobody's crying, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful sentence. Okay? And yeah, I see lots of good stuff coming in here on the chat, too. This is, this is good. So that's option two, semicolon, all right? Option three, I'm not even close to being done yet. There's so many different ways to fix it. Again, here's the mistake again. It keeps coming back, this comma splice. It won't go away. Sarah's father is a renowned artist, comma. Her mother is a successful theater actress, okay? This isn't the mistake. Fix it with and. That's all you need to do. Okay, if you really want that comma there, just put the and, and then the mistake is gone because you're using that conjunction from, you know, fanboys, which we've talked about before, okay? And again, everything's fine. Speaking of this, actually, while I'm talking about the different ways to fix it, let's see if, if this might be a new word for you. The word renowned. If, if this is a new word for you, I want you guys to put in the chat what you think it means based on the sentence, okay? So let's get back into this. All is right here, this is wonderful. But I'm not done yet because there's so many other <laughs> options to fix this sentence. Now it says the sound is gone. Is the sound gone? Sound is absence? No? Okay, option four. Corrected. There's that mistake again. Get rid of that comma. It's gone completely. What are you going to do now? You put whereas, the conjunction, okay? And now you've got, um, you've got a complex sentence, okay? So you've got that conjunction there, and there's no need for the comma. Take it away. Whereas, this was one of the con contrast words that we talked about um, last week. Good sound is good, okay? Is that a question coming in? Let me take a look. Selma's got it. Yes, the word famous does mean renowned, right? You've got successful here. You've got renowned. Um, skillful is coming in from Oscar. Well-known. Well-known from Muhammad is, is right. I would say renowned means famous or, or well-known. You, you guys are professionals here. Good stuff. Okay. I'm not done yet. I've got so many other ways to fix this mistake, okay? Option number five. I'm not even, I'm not even slowing down. I'm not even getting tired, okay? So, Sarah's father is a renowned artist. Again, that mistake, get rid of it. Put the semicolon there, and based on what we talked about last week with comparison contrast, put in that adverb similarly, put a comma there, and now you've got, again, a grammatical and properly punctuated compound sentence showing similarity. Okay. Notice how this one shows that they are similar and the previous sentence showed that they were different. This is what we talked about last week where certain comparisons are um, opinion. It's kind of up to you whether you, you see the difference or the similarity. Okay, so one more correction. Okay, one more, one more kind of, uh, of, of fix for it. And it has a little name, the series. Now, remember that the problem with this is that you've got two independent clauses connected with one comma. And we said you can't do that, okay? So we said you can use a period, a semicolon, conjunctions, adverbs and semicolons, all of these ways to fix it. And another, the final way to fix it, I promise I'm finished, this is the last one, is leaving the comma there, but adding a third independent clause, and now it is a series of three, which is fine. Two, no good. Three, wonderful. Three or more, you could put a fourth one in there if you wanted to, okay? So Sarah's father is a renowned artist, comma. Her mother is a successful theater actress, comma. And her brother is a respected photographer, done. And now, all is wonderful because you got independent clause here, you've got independent clause here, and an independent clause there. Eduardo is asking, besides, to, yeah, as a, as a linking word, mm, I don't think I would use besides. I mean, I think you're talking about, um, 
kind of like in addition or, so, or something like that. Um, good, good question, Eduardo. I think one of our um, similarities, differences words would, would work a little bit better, like similarly or likewise or, or something like that. Okay? And if you're using besides, okay, let me go real fast here back this way. If you're going to use besides, you're going to use it this way, okay? With um, the semicolon and besides and the comma. But I think in this case, the, the logic of the meaning besides, I, I don't think I would use that there. I would use similarly instead or likewise or, or something like that, okay? Good question. My voice, my voice is getting deeper and deeper. I'm using my, my radio voice now, okay, everybody? So, independent clause, we said, independent clause, and an independent clause, three together, everything is wonderful, the mistake is corrected, and, um, and that's it, okay? So, homework for the week, because it's four o'clock my time, wherever it is where you are, it's, it's time for me to, it's time for me to go home. I know it's sad to say goodbye, okay, but um, there's always next week to look forward to. All right, so homework for the week, and I know that um, some of you guys uh, sent me some stuff from last week, and um, I am going to look, I'm still going to look at it. As I said, I had a cold over the weekend, so didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, please share uh, homework last week. I said um, if you had written any comparison contrast examples, um, you can share those with me, and I'll, I'll take a look. Maybe even I'll, I'll pop out but stick around for a few minutes in the, in the chat. If you guys have questions, I'll be here. I'm just gonna stop talking, okay? But homework for the week, two things you can do, okay? One of them, read, of course. Look, how, look, at these, look how happy these people are. They're all reading together. They're pointing at it. They're smiling. <laughs> it's great, all right? So read this weekend and even, uh, or this week, I should say. Follow that link on the document that I shared with you and um, take a look at that article and see if the article can, an can answer some of the questions that we talked about today, okay? Also, just, just because, because I'm sure you guys don't have enough to do already, um, I put in this document that, that Lane put in the, in the chat, here, let me make it smaller so you can see it, he put the doc in the chat already. We'll put the link under the video when it comes, uh, when it's in YouTube. Underneath, we've got a second part to this exercise. These are comma splices. Well, some of them are comma splices, some of them aren't, okay? You have to decide, is it correct or does it need to be fixed? If it's a comma splice, fix the sentence, okay? And then next week, you can share your answers with me and we'll go over them if you have questions. So for example, look at letter A. Patrick was cycling along a country road at dusk. He saw a family of deer under an apple tree. Well, that sounds wonderful for Patrick, but bad for whoever wrote the sentence because that is a comma splice, okay? So that comma splice needs to be fixed, and um, I would just change that to a semicolon, or you can do uh, do it a different way if you wanted to. It's a, it's entirely up to you. Okay. So for next week, read the article, see if you answer those questions that you uh, that you asked, do this comma splice exercise, and of course read 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 as much as you can. Okay. And in future um, lessons, well, I'll keep giving you reading tips as well. All right. So, no oh, one question coming up is be wrong here. We made sure, well, I'll do one more before I pass, uh, before I, <laughs> I was going to say, before I pass out. I'm not going to pass out, don't worry. <laughs> before I, before I, I sign off, we'll say instead. Um, that's a good question. Is it wrong? Actually, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. You decide, okay? You decide if it's wrong. Come back next week and tell me, is it, is it wrong or not? Did you fix it or not? And um, I'll look forward to that. Okay, so... See you later, wherever you are, whatever time it is. Um, thanks for coming. We'll see you on our Facebook page, right? Uh, Learn English on Facebook. If you have any questions or in the, in, in the uh, class next week, remember Mark's class. And so we might change the time of it. All right, and Lane is telling me that we may change the time of this stream because I know that it is, 
it is quite late for a lot of you guys, and um, obviously I appreciate you staying up so late. I know that if this wasn't on, you guys would all be going to bed at 9.30, <laughs> okay? So I appreciate you staying up so late just for me. And, um, and we're gonna look into the, the time change. And if we change the time, then we'll um, announce it. Okay, guys, see you later for now. I'm gonna pop off, I'm gonna say goodbye, and we'll put some music back on, and we'll see you here uh, next week, okay? Um, thanks for coming. See you later. <laughs>